Oh boy, we're back. We're still here. Not canceled yet. Here's the giveaway for today. MAPS Split. This is our more advanced bodybuilder workout program. And we're going to give one of you free access. Okay, but this is what you got to do if you want free access. You have to enter the contest by leaving a comment below the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If you do all three things, all of those, and we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Split. Also, we're running a sale on two very popular MAPS workout programs. So the first one is MAPS Performance. This program is athletic-minded. So train like an athlete, look like an athlete, move like an athlete. So if that kind of workout is what you enjoy doing, that is a great program. Now that program's 50% off. Another program that's 50% off is MAPS Aesthetic. This is more of a bodybuilder type of workout program. So if you want to develop balance and symmetry and sculpt and shape and build your body, this program may be right for you. It's also 50% off. So here's how you get the discounts, okay? If you want MAPS Performance, go to mapsgreen.com. If you want MAPS Aesthetic, go to mapsblack.com. And the code for 50% off for both programs is FEB50. So again, that's FEB50 with no space for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. Hey, does your knee hurt? Oftentimes, the knee pain is actually not coming from your knee. It's caused by something else. It's what would that be, Sal? Knee. Yeah. You know, you know what? Uh, this, the, the reason why I wanted to say this is we had a, a question. Uh, on, on Not just one. We've had like three or four in the we last have, couple weeks. We have. MAPS Prime Pro is a correctional exercise kind of based program. And all the major joints are in there that mm -hmm. you can address except for the knees. And oftentimes we get people messaging us, why aren't the knees on here? My knees hurt. And that's a common area that people have pain. Yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to explain a little bit around, about knee pain and what the most common reasons are that your knees tend to bother you. So the best explanation I can give is this, is that the, the knee joint itself, although it's this way more complex than the way I'm going to make it sound, it really only has two functions, right? It, it flexes and extends. So I can, I can bend my knee and I can straighten my knee, right? Flex and extend. I can't rotate the knee joint. I can't bend it laterally. I can only, you know, flex my knee and extend my knee. But the ankle joint and the hip joint that are attached closest to the knee, yeah. they're very dynamic, right? I can rotate my ankle to a certain degree. I can definitely bend it laterally, flex it and extend it. My hip joint, I can rotate it, bend it laterally. I can flex it. I can extend yeah. it. And so when those joints lack stability, they lack strength or mobility, what happens is the ligaments of the knee that keep it from doing anything but flexing and extending, all those ligaments that keep it from rotating and bending laterally, they have to bear the brunt of the pressure to prevent the knee from doing these things. So if your ankles and your hips are off, mm -hmm. oftentimes over time, you'll start to have knee pain and you're like, whoa, it's something that's wrong well, with my knee. It's trying to make up for a lot of the stress that it needs to stabilize the knee and, and it, it a lot of times, because your your ankle and your hips are so dynamic, you'll, you'll get put in a lot of different angles, and your, your knee will tend to travel you know, in one direction or the other, and to try and keep it stable, mm -hmm. a lot of times it just stresses it out, and then the ligaments take the brunt of the force. The yeah. same principles apply for the elbow, too. So yeah. if you're suffering from elbow pain, a lot of people are always looking for like exercises they can do or things they can do for the elbow itself, but many times that's related to the wrist Very or the similar. shoulder. Yeah. So if you have poor mobility in your shoulder or your wrist or lack stability and control in either of those joints, the stress goes to the elbow. So a lot of times you're looking at the area that's bothering you, thinking that there's something wrong there, but it's actually stemming from uh, one of the other joints. Yeah, think of it this way, right? Like if I I think of a, uh, a submission in jiu-jitsu called a heel hook, right? So if I took your foot, I straightened your leg out, and I go to twist your leg, but your hip won't rotate. For whatever reason, your hip lacks mobility, and I start twisting, the ligaments of the knee are going to have to hold tight, and if I twist hard enough, I'm yeah. going to tear your knee. And so it's this sort of your last line of defense. It is, and so this is the problem. So people will squat and lunge and deadlift and do all these different exercises, and their ankles and knees aren't doing. Excuse me, their ankles and hips aren't doing what they're supposed to. And over time, you know, when the knee flexes and extends, the kneecap kind of tracks 
uh, there's like a little groove in the in the femur and the kneecap tracks in it and things have to be in the right position. Well, if it's pr- if pressure's you know being put in one direction, things start to track wrong. The joint then starts to get undue pressure over time. That builds inflammation. Then you go to the doctor. They image your knee mm-hmm. and they go, "Oh, you have inflammation in your knee," but they're not. They never address right, or oftentimes they don't address the root cause, which is it's because your ankles are tight or immobile or weak, or your hips are tight or immobile and weak. And so this is why oftentimes, oftentimes the solution for chronic knee pain resides there and not in the actual, you know, doing stuff with the knee itself type of deal. You know? the, the low back is like this too. A lot of times clients will have, you know, you say they have a bad back or their low back is always bothering them and they think it's their low back where the issue is. And a lot of times it's related to your, your hips, the mm-hmm. inability to control and have stability in your hips and mobility in them is what is causing the low back to, to be stressed a lot of times too. Yeah. And think about it this way, right? Like you're like, oh, my knees bother me when I squat. So I'm going to put knee sleeves or knee wraps, yeah. right? What those are doing is they're doing the job or they're, they're, it's like your ligaments except externally. And now you've right. added more ligaments and support. So now the knee doesn't hurt as much. Again, not addressing the root issue, which is when you squat, maybe your knee is trying, it's you're pushing it you know, laterally or right. there's some rotate. Sometimes if your feet, your ankles are tight and you go down to squat, there's this rotational pressure that happens because really tight ankles, when you squat down, they want to turn out. But if your feet are grounded, that rotational pressure then gets taken on by the knee. Like, God, it's weird when I squat heavy, I have this weird pain inside my knee. Like, there must be something right. wrong with my knee. And it's just a little tiny, like, degree of, of change if it's off track just that little bit. Like, your analogy with the sliding glass door. Yeah. Like, just that little, like, fractional inch that it's off, uh, you know, it just it ruins the whole thing. Like, the whole thing is, is you know, based on the fact that it – stay stable in these movements and if it's not there's lots of compensations that have to occur which stresses out uh you know the the entire system well it's really obvious too like when you go through maps prime pro and when and most often when someone has like a knee issue it's it's normally on one side or the other more than the other side right so this is where it it becomes really obvious of what the issue is is when you get into and you do the 90 90 test or you do the ankle mobility test in prime pro if the side that you have pain in your knee also has issues with the uh, in the ninety ninety position and or the ankle. You know this is where it's coming from. That's and that's how you know you start. You need to work on that. It's like you know, okay, I've got pain on the side. When I get down in this ninety ninety, oh wow, I can't even get my knee on the ground or I can't lift my back heel up in that position. Oh, there's obviously a, a stability issue and control and mobility issue in that hip. That's where you need to start is addressing that. And then the same thing goes for the ankle. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I I, mean, I experienced this myself um, a couple few years ago. I was on vacation and uh, I was working out in a hotel gym. This was in Mexico, so it's real warm and kind of humid or whatever, and they, the, there were marble floors, and as I was leaving the gym, I, I fell down the stairs, and my left foot, I sat on it and kind of slid, and I thought for sure when I got to the bottom, like, I, I tore something. Yeah. Now, when I stood up, luckily I didn't tear anything, but I did do a number on my left ankle, and since then, my left ankle's always had a little bit less mobility than my right, so still to this day, if I squat heavy and if there's any issues with my form, I feel it in my left knee. I never feel it in my left ankle, but that's where it's coming from. Because as my left ankle is tight, that's exactly what happens. As I squat, I know what happens to compensate my leg wants to rotate. But mm-hmm. because my foot is so grounded, I get that rotational pressure in my left knee, which goes to my meniscus, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so then I'm squatting. So I'm bending the joint. It's a snowball with this, effect up the kinetic chain. Yes, and I'm... And I'm, I'm bending the knee while I'm with weight, but the meniscus is holding tight, preventing things from twisting with enough weight and reps, you're going to start to develop pain. And this is the, these are the causes of, of chronic pain, which by the way, this is different than an acute injury, right? So if, if your knee, your knee hurts because you just tore your knee, yeah. okay, that's different, <laughs> that's <a little> right? <laughs> different. <laughs> but if you're like, oh, my knee, you know, it, it always bothers me and it's been an issue I've had for a couple of years and I don't know what that deal is. And when I walk too much or run too much or uh, you know, do lots of squats. It starts to bother my knee. It's coming from a, a a dysfunction, and it's usually the joints closest to the knee. Like in this case, in this case, the the knee is surrounded by or connected to very in con in the in the in comparison, very dynamic joints. You can do a lot of things with your ankle and your hip, especially your hip. Your knee doesn't do those things. It just yeah. flexes and extends. So that's where you know a lot of the 
the pain comes from. You right. develop oh, a lot dude. of pain that way. So, uh, since you mentioned pain, uh, there was a painful moment this, for me this weekend that I was like, oh no, did I make a massive parenting mistake or what? Uh oh, no. oh, dude. So, I, uh, I had the full day with my oldest. Ethan and um, it was cool because like I don't really get a lot of alone time like it's usually like with both boys and so I, I usually have to kind of tone down the fact that he's older he's three years older and so like we do a lot of stuff that's not too uh, so that like, mature can, so right? that ever can do also yeah so ever could can hang with us and, and do all that so oh, he you, was you actually doing it? his own thing yeah <laughs> so well first off we start by going paintballing which I thought was awesome and it was fun and and we we got uh, a lot of fun doing that with his cousin and my brother-in-law and uh yeah so we went we went after it and then I, I got home and I'm like you know what we don't really get to go see like more kind of mature movies and and Jackass just came out oh god and I remember the, like how hilarious like the it's last so couple were but like you know there's some scenes and, and some skits in there that were definitely suspect like not you know, like they've had stuff where they've had like to drink the- semen and, uh, <laughs> you know, they, so anyways, like we put all of that stuff butt. that was bad, they put in the new one and times like 10. Oh, wow. Right. Oh, no. So it was like, they come right out the gates too, dude, or did it warm you up a little bit? There was so <laughs> many dicks in this movie, dude, I, that I could not explain to my kid. You know, like <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, what have I done? Like the opening scene. And I don't care if it's, spo- it's, Literally, you're gonna see it. You have to see it to uh, there's, I don't appreciate think there's it. anything spoiling you about that. Spoil you know what you're getting. Yeah, don't you? you can't spoil there's anything. There's a plot twist. <laughs> Most of these like like have been reenacted skits, anyways. Yeah. That they just put themselves in like serious harm's way. Uh, so <laughs> the guy Chris Pontius, I think he starts off. He painted his his dick green, right? And he's like underneath this platform where basically they turned it into like a um, a Godzilla. And so they're like puppeteering his dick and like <laughs> everybody's like running away and stuff. And like, you know, buildings are smashing. So they did this whole thing where it was like, so that's the opener. Right. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, my God. Ah, like it's, you see everything. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's definitely circumcised. You know, congratulations. <laughs> um, and, you know, and then it gets into like all this other crazy stuff. Dude, I, I can't believe that uh, Johnny Knoxville is still alive, dude. He did the same with the bull. It hit him so hard. Like, he landed, broke his arm, and then was, like, out, blacked out, and, like, I thought he died. So what's your guys' theory on these guys still doing this? Like, uh, do they need the money? Do you, like, they've already, they've already made a ton of money, right, doing this I, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, first, I I'm, mean, they're known for this. Like, I think this is, like, their identity at this point. Exactly. I know, but these guys are in their, I mean, they're late 40s now? Yeah. Late 40s? And they're not, like, normal, healthy Late 40s. None of them look good. They've they've pushed the limit forever. And ha- so I know part of their and didn't one of them die? Didn't one of them yeah. take his life? Right, Ryan one Dunn in the died. group. Right, he he like smashed his Lambo or whatever. And I know I know they've all kind of gone through their their addiction for a while, yeah. so they've all had kind of issues like that. So do you have right. any do you have any idea on the backstory on them? Like are they like was this like well, a money grab because they maybe some of them might be hurting financially or is this like a reunion? Oh, we're gonna do this one last time. You got Johnny Knoxville who's kind of. Was in the acting realm, like was in a few movies that were, you know, hit or miss. And then you had like, so Steve-O is like becoming a, a stand-up comedian and does tours and stuff. And I think he's like somewhat successful with that. I've seen him on billboards. Yeah. So he does, I think he does a Vegas a lot, but um, I don't really know a lot about the rest of the guys other than I'm sure that this was like one of those, the producer of the other movies was like, come on guys. And was like, probably like hounding them about this and like throwing cash at them. And it was probably just like a total cash. Well, I, I think it'd be tough when that's your identity, right? That's what you're known for. And then you get older and you start to feel irrelevant and you're like, you want to bring <laughs> so, it back. So you want to feel relevant again? So you, yeah. you, so you Bro- staple your dick to a two by hey, four or something. Hey, oh it's, my God. Hey, it's dude. no different. Worse than, stuff it's, than that, it's no dude. different than when a boxer is in his, and, you know, he's done and he gets back in the ring. Dude, or a fighter. Think about it. Steve-O you know? put a, a queen bee on his dick, and then, like, <laughs> all of the bees swarmed around, and he had this, like, swarm just hanging off, getting stung, like, a hundred times on a sack. Oh, wow. I was like, ah, like, I, I can't even imagine, hold on, dude. Hold I mean, on. so, I, I mean. Did you, did you get up and leave at any point? Were you like, I was just we're, like we're this, doing this. Dude. I was like this, and, and, and I, was, I was looking over at uh, Ethan, and he's just like, ah, like. 
Oh my god. Traumatized. Dude. Yeah, yeah, probably traumatized. I mean, so I've made some I made similar mistakes with but my oldest laughing. because my oldest son uh, you you're excited to do things with them. Yeah. So you kind of do them a little too early. I, I, I kind of jumped you, the gun. You talked about that about, the the sh- about some of the... Yeah, dude, I traumatized him. I'm Doug, like, we got to watch this. And it terrified him. And then he, he was scared to watch TV with me for like a year or two. Dude, Doug, will you like, look sorry. up how much how much they made off those movies? I'm curious. Like, it, uh, how, how much money do you... Because obviously, okay, when you when they first came up, um, I mean, I love well worth it, hilarious. right? Like, yeah. I mean, you're you can you you come from from not very much, right? And then make potentially millions of dollars by doing. Well, didn't all they this start stuff. off making those skaters? Yeah, they did the films like, doing crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah like same Bam, stuff. Margera. And yeah, all yeah it started. Yeah, it started with a, a couple of them and some other guys doing some of the underground videos, which I'd seen those before, and then it turned into like the. But I mean. Uh, to get the fame and to get the money, I could see like you probably ask a lot of people, hey, if I paid you five million dollars, would you do all this yeah. crazy shit? They say yes. But if you already had the money, wow, uh, they, yeah. wow, the first one brought in one hundred and seventeen million dollars, second one one hundred and two. I mean, and, and I'm sure that the budget wasn't massive, yeah, you know, for these, and and that's not including how much they made with the show that was on MTV. These are the movies, yeah, because the show on MTV crushed. Oh yeah, it when crushed. that thing came out. Now I wonder how much because that's how much they made in the box office. So they, they didn't make that. So yeah, I'm curious I to what it took home. Yeah, I'm curious to what each each one of them were kind of getting paid. Like Johnny Knoxville, how much money he he's probably making the most, he right? Probably, yeah, he he's probably the face of it, most. so he probably made the Dude, most. Dude, but give the guy credit. Like he did the craziest stunts out of all of them, man. He was getting shot out of the cannon. I mean, he did the bull thing. He did. Um, what was the other one? He did the one where like. Basically, you know how you get like a big guy that it's like a blob. He like drops down, and he was sitting in this um, furniture store <laughs> as an old dressed up as an old man. Yeah, yeah. And like this guy oh, falls off the ladder, like he's fixing something, and then boom, he hits him, and it goes all the way through the roof. And and everybody that was working there were like, "Oh my god, what happened?" He just like went right <laughs> through the roof, dude. I, I think it's one of those things where you see this a lot sometimes with athletes where they, they have like their golden years and it's hard to let go of because yeah. that becomes that's see, a I psychological think it, So thing. I think it's more like this, right? We're, we're totally speculating and no one knows for sure. I think it's more like you may – so his net worth is $75 million, right? So he's you know made tens of millions of dollars and I'm sure there was like a – a huge like you know hockey stick like thing right he wasn't making any money then all of a sudden the first one second one third yeah, i mean yeah, so yeah. and then you get four or five lambos two or three houses like and they got to pay for yeah all property the taxes and yeah. luxury tax and all yeah. that stuff starts That's coming in. factor in yeah and then you're like oh shit you know 10 years down the road 15 years down the road you're going like oh wow i love this lifestyle that i have and i am definitely burning a hole pretty fast and you got to wonder like Okay, I mean, maybe they have. I have no idea what their investments look like, but I would think it's more like that. It's like, oh shit, let's let's do another grab while we still can. Yeah, and you know, but what is it? A- I mean, they got to be in like their fifties, like you know, Johnny Knoxville and Steve. I know they're seventy one. Is that what you just said, Doug? Yeah, oh, so yeah, he's, he's 50, 50. He's, Yeah, he's fifty years old. Doing 50. doing that kind of shit. In yeah, and you're 50s, not dude, you're not a like, normal fifty year old. Yeah, you don't you, you don't you're like a seventy year old at that point. <laughs> Bro, they're like brain, breaking their necks and like yeah. they're in there like on the street stretcher just like yeah. bro I, I roll an ankle now and it's like a month recovery i know <laughs> dude my back hurts. Be out the next day playing basketball the next day you know what like, nowadays you roll an no, ankle like sit on the toilet too long i'm like what happened to my leg i don't know what's going on I, listen, I think it's both i think it's part of what you said adam but i think the other part is that becomes a part well, of your sure. identity. So I mean, and your- then you're you're rich and you're sitting there and you're like, like what now? What like what do I do? And then that's when you got all the. I see, attention. but I, I feel like if you got, I mean, I feel like if you got money coming in and and you're it's you're able to do all those crazy things, then you're not letting that get to you. Maybe it's a combination of both, right? So you're. The, your, the money's going really fast, and then in addition, that that's your whole idea. You can't yeah. go do something else, really. Well, right. So you're not getting you're not getting paid. They, and I wonder how many of them actually went out and tried to do other stuff to see if they could actually make a, a really. They good. stayed in entertainment. A lot of them yeah. tried entertainment, which uh, I, I think the smartest thing to do is when you make that money is to learn how to invest it and st- stop trying to make that that lightning happen twice. Bro, there was just okay. So there's this one guy though. I I like really felt bad for him. I, I feel like he got psychologically traumatized. Uh, he was like like strapped into this chair 
and they put honey all over him. And I think it's probably in, even in the preview with like salmon on him. And he, he thought like he was going to get stung by bees. And so he's freaking out. Ah. He's like, oh, no, no, we're not using bees. And then they lock the doors. And then all of a sudden they let a bear. <laughs> <laughs> and a fucking what? bear is eating off of him and like scratching him and like shoving his head down his crotch, eating stuff. And he's like, it's going to eat my dick. Oh. And, Bro, and the, he, the risk to do something like that. Dude, I don't care if the bear is tamed or or what, dude. There's food all over him. Who knows? Like, he might just take a huge bite. On and accident. Like, yeah, exactly. Oh, my And then God. right before he was going to do that, the trainer came in and took him out. And then and then the guy's, like, shaking and, like, st- thought, like, more stuff was going to happen. To oh, him. boy. I'm like, oh, my God. What? Hey, you know, it reminds me of this. It's like. <laughs> it's so crazy. It reminds me of this. It's like, we all know people like this, right? And I've even, I even struggle with this. You, you work out for years and years and years. As you get older, in your 40s and your 50s, it's hard not to compare yourself to yourself when you're in your 20s or 30s or other 20 and 30 year olds. Yeah. When the reality, and, and when you do that, you get into trouble. When I'm, I've done this already where I'm working out and I'm like, ooh, I feel strong. And I remember what I did when I was 32. And I'm like, can I beat that again? And it's like, what you have to do is compare yourself to the, really, it's the context, right? If you're 50 and you're fit, you compare yourself to other 50-year-olds. You're way better off than them, but don't compare yourself to it. It makes me wonder what's going to happen to like, because really this whole like uh, influencer market is relatively new, right? It's yeah. maybe what, 10 years it's kind of been around. So it makes me really wonder like what that's going to look like, you know, 20 years down the road when a lot of these like really popular kids on Instagram that got famous because of the way they look or the crazy shit they did. And then it's like had all this money and had all this attention and kind of fame. And then the, the, I wonder if we're going to see if it's going to be even worse than like what you see with like, so like traditional celebrities, if the crash is going to become more of them faster and harder, I think than what you see. I think the rise is faster, right? Exactly. I think that's the factor, right? Like as as quickly as you make your way to fame and fortune, like the the fall usually happens even even faster. faster. If you're you're valued for your beauty, wow, you better not identify with that because you're going to be screwed. Well, I mean, at some point, it's even worse. Like you, these like the social media influencers and people that are, that are, you know, quote unquote famous, on Instagram, I, 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 it's like it's accepted that you all Photoshop and use editing and things like that. So it's like talk about totally distorting. It's one thing to be like famous and on camera and known for being this, you know, beautiful star or whatever like that. But it's still pretty much you like yeah. these people are distorting the way they look to present Dude. themselves a certain way. I mean, come on. This is why I was at I was at the mall the other day with the kids and there was a billboard. It was like a like a makeup store or whatever. And there was a billboard with share. Hmm. How old is Cher? She's got to be 70s, 80, maybe? She's taking the anti-aging serum, and she's huh? And there's like a picture of her, and Jessica's like, oh my God, whatever. I'm like, I bet if we saw her in person, we would think she was like a walking like plastic corpse. Yeah. And 75. It, 75. You know what it is? Now, in her defense, she's looked pretty good for a long time, right, yeah. Doug? Like yeah. She's kept, her, she's kept yeah, herself she's done a good job. Up. I think it's the pla- – yeah, it's probably yeah. Really catching but up a bit. What it is is that you know she was known for her beauty. You identify with that. You don't want to age. You can't accept it. I mean, would you still hit it or no? What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> No. Would you, would you, you want to say it on no. air, dude. I mean, I'd still hook up with yeah. Jane Fonda. Come Jane on. Fonda's like 80 and she still looks hell you, hot. You, I don't know. Have you share. seen Jane Fonda? Yeah. Pull well, up she's Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda, though, was, but Jane Fonda was a... Uh, hold on a second. You lie. Right? You would still hit that. No, she's I kind of milky, Yes, you dude. would. She's totally got That's that. That's not a milf, You dude. like hair like that. That's a great... It's a gilf. That's a G-gilf. That's a great gilf. It's a new category Look at Fonda. You know what, though? Fonda... Maybe not so much that one. Hold on a second. Fonda's a fitness fanatic, though. She's always stayed strong. I think Cher is into fitness, too, no? Yeah. Yeah, you don't... Maybe. Yeah, I think she's always been into fitness, too. I don't know. That's too big of an age gap for me. I don't know. It's a little bit... It's a little no, too much. The, the, gra- the granny. <laughs> well, Doug, you would, right? It's only a couple years older. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, I'm staying out of this conversation in the that's current political Doug climate. Likes, Doug yeah. likes, that's yeah. Doug's wheelhouse. Yeah. No, dude. You know, that's a that's a uh, very popular, I didn't know this, that's a very popular pornography category for a lot of men is granny. They call it granny porn. Women in that. Really? Room. Yes. I, so you it know makes what? me so curious. Is it what, just because they're bored? The fact that that gets recommended yeah. in yours is weird to me. It does get recommended. I get, I get, I get the stepsister <laughs> one all the time. Oh, <laughs> that's that's right. They do that to everybody. Like, everybody wants to bang their thing. stepsister. Dude. No, <laughs> you know what it is? It's their, their taboo fantasy. But up. the granny one, there, there was this, I don't remember who wrote it. There were these, these uh, scientists who were writing about uh, pornography searches and categories and why they exist and what makes them popular. 
And they they said that one of the reasons why the granny porn one is is tends to be popular is a lot of boys grow up in these boarding schools and they get punished and you know uh, oh, wow. and mm-hmm. and um, by these older women. And and you know the spanking thing? Yeah. It's because oftentimes they would get spanked with a, by a ruler or by now, is this that, older so nun or whatever. Is it what do you know the psychology behind that? Is that because you're growing up at an age when yes. like you're masturbating like crazy and it's you, like an imprint. And you, exactly. You get beat you and become, then you end up you find yourself masturbating twenty minutes later in the in the bathroom or some shit. They call or, imprint Justin's or, right. It's like you you're sexually developing and yeah. then during that time you're you know, your teacher who's, you know, 50 or also whatever. yelling at you. And yeah, shit, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And so I'm really into car exhausts. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> what? I just figured I'd throw that out there. Right you... <laughs> car exhaust? <laughs> you stick your dick in a tailpipe? Hey, it, What'd you, know, you do? Was, uh, yeah, I was into old cars. What? So what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's joking. He's joking. He's, <laughs> he's, you know, eight years, he's bro. Like, hey, hey. I mean, I do like the smell of exhaust, so don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's like it's only certain cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's not all of them. Yeah. As, long as, got, as long as it's got flow masters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm screwed. Rev it up. Yeah. Oh. No, stop. Wow. All right, uh, wow. let's talk about some, some bad news. Oh, oh, wow. Why? We're having fun. I know. Did you guys uh, hear the statistic about the, about gyms? I did. It was in my notes to talk about it today, dude. I So, U.S., 30%, they say, have been shut down permanently. Done. Never Done. Coming, never coming back. In Europe, they're saying 50%. Of gyms. Woo. What? Permanently closed. Which, okay, there's a couple things here. Dude, one- it's a tragedy. One, it makes me very sad and upset because I don't think all those gyms would have been safe. I think the pandemic, some of them would have been shut down anyway, but definitely not 30%. That's a lot no, of that was yeah, caused yeah, by no, forced no. shutdowns or whatever. So that's number one, and that's very sad to me uh, because what it does is it just gives a greater market share to big corporations and stuff like that. Two, it's a bit of an opportunity for the existing gyms because you have 30% of your competitors Um, gone. So I wonder what the existing gyms, now that people are going back to working out, remember we speculated on this. I wonder if they're seeing... A yeah, I was surge. I was talking to Adam not that long ago, like maybe just a couple weeks oh, ago. Oh, from about, UFC gyms? Yeah, and um, you know they they say they're doing really well. Nothing out of the crazy ordinary though. Like so, there's not not like what you would think, right? You would think thirty to fifty percent of these gyms done, and then you would think that there would be a huge, especially yeah. right now. Well, it's probably like back to normal from like like because it was such low volume, I low mean, numbers. My theory is that a good portion of that thirty percent. Let's and I'm again just we're speculating. Twenty five percent maybe were not operating very well as it was, and that was just like the straw that broke the camel's back. Sure, yeah. I, I, that would be my guess. Would yeah. be, I mean, there, I, at least half. Yeah, at least half of uh, they were kind of sitting on that line. Yeah, right. And they couldn't survive a month. And we know how many uh, trainers and people try and start up that business, and then it's a hard business to make money. It is, and so and then what percentage of those people just happen to start at a bad time? So Mm -hmm. maybe you 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 could have been or would have been a, a good business operator. But you like literally the lockdowns happen three months into you opening your gym. Mm-hmm. Like I don't care how good of an operator you are. Good luck if you just started your business and then you're being told you got to shut your doors down. So I, I would imagine there's a good percentage that were just poorly run. This was a, what exposed them. Then another percentage that were just getting started. So that of course that yeah. crippled them. They couldn't even get no momentum. That would be my guess. Like I, or otherwise we should see this. Cra- like you should hear record numbers from Planet Fitness, record well, numbers from UFC Lifetime. Way. Well, think of it this way: if these bigger gym companies like Planet Fitness and you, we'll see though. Planet Fitness is going to come out with their earnings, I think, uh, it's, uh, after first quarter, right? But if they're doing good, let's say they're not doing like breaking that records, but they're doing good, I would like to see what percentage of people are actually still going to gyms and working out. I mm-hmm. bet you haven't reached what it used to be. I well, bet you there's still a lot of people So I would like to say, too, home. if you remember, that was our debate Yeah, mm-hmm. when, before this all went down. I, I debated that it would go back to people going back to gyms. I don't think it's fully done that. That's my opinion. I oh, think I we're still in the middle. Well, of I mean, of course it hasn't. I mean, I'm an example of that. Yeah. I'm the one who was <laughs> saying that it was going to go back to gyms. I haven't been back to a gym. I've yeah, been yeah. training in, in my garage or here at the studio, so... Um, I, I definitely think we still have we still have time for it to, to happen that way, to go back that way. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many people are, are have made the change to at home 
training and are never going back. Boy, that, I feel, th- dude, I just feel like all of the information we've been provided over the years about the benefits of exercise and, you know, dialing your in your yeah. nutrition, it's like we're starting all the way over from scratch because of this. It's like we just decided to throw all that out. And then, oh, yeah, we're wait a minute, wasn't there benefit to exercise and nutrition? And why did we, sh- like, we're going all the way back and it's going to have to build up, like, from scratch. Yeah, I mean, know- the truth, though, it's always been like this, though, right? Like, I mean, we know, we know like, all the things that are, re- are a lot of the health issues that we deal with in America right now, a good percentage of them can be, could have been handled by, preventative by. A good, most of them. Yeah, that's most what I'm saying. Of, yeah. So it's, I mean, COVID just really highlighted that. Maybe it made people that, Maybe we're less aware, more aware, but we've been. This has been our battle for twenty it is. years. You know what the problem is? Yeah. I'll tell you right now, hundred percent. What the problem was? Uh, it was that the fitness industry doesn't have a very powerful lobby. It's a fact. If they had a good lobby, they weren't represented well at all. No, they don't have a lobby. Look, in California, gyms were shut down. Hollywood was allowed to operate. Hollywood yeah. has lots of power. Liquor stores. Liquor stores were still Weed open. Dispensaries. Yeah, I mean, I, there were small businesses. Strip clubs. There were small yeah. restaurants. This yeah, is let's true keep now. Going. Yeah. In LA, there were there were literally small restaurants shut down, yeah. forced to shut down in their parking lots, movie sets set up with lots of people working. Because mm. why the Hollywood and the, that industry has a large lobby. So what happens is the lobbyists go to Congress or go to the representatives and say, hey, you got to keep us up or whatever, and then they make special arrangements. Gyms don't have that. Gyms yeah. are like, shut them down, and we're not going to play any political – we're not going to pay any political price you know, for, for shutting them down. I, I'll tell you what. I don't know how I – because I owned a gym, right? Uh, before Mind Pump, that's what I did. I don't know how – I man, I would have been bad, dude. Online coaching. Well, Online coaching. No, yeah, well, that and I would I would have been I would have had a speakeasy. I would have been really pissed oh, off. Oh yeah, I mean, you forced yeah, me to shut down. Like, are you kidding me? But the move was to go. It, the move would be to go uh, online coach. I mean, we, we were saying that before any of this yeah. stuff. Yeah, that, well, that, we already had, like moved in that. direction. Yeah, I mean, that, half of where, why we're here doing what we're doing is you kind of saw the writing on the wall that, that everything was moving in this direction, and, and we had been telling our audience well before COVID came around that. You should be building somewhat of an online presence, even if you are an in-person trainer. You yeah. have your own gym, brick and mortar. You should build an online presence to complement that, because that's the future of how things are going. Yeah, so. the, the the fastest growing segment of the personal trainer, I guess you could put up market, is online coaching. Yep. By far. Oh yeah, Jason's oh, yeah. telling. He, Jason's getting flooded right now. Yeah, I was talking. He to must him. be. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I yeah. see a bunch of new faces every time I'm on those calls. Yeah. Or right now, NCI is doing 50 percent off their enrollment. By the way, they so, are. Yeah. So I talked to him, and he's like, "Oh, we're exploding, and we're not trying to slow down. We're going to certify and get as many coaches out there, good coaches, as possible." So they're still doing the 50 percent off uh, enrollment or whatever. Yeah, you and I have a call tonight with them, don't we? We do. But yeah. they're it's blowing up because it's. Uh, the the pandemic really put more. It was already growing, by the way. Before the pandemic, it was the fastest growing segment of personal training because you could reach more people. It's uh, the capital required to start, yeah. and the liability is way smaller. I just had a conversation with my cousin, who she's a trainer. <clears throat> she's you know uh, training lots of clients. Sent me a text about opening her own place, and I said, "You sure you want to do that? There's a lot of capital. It costs you a lot of money to start it." Then you're on the hook for huge liability. And then if you want to scale, yeah. you got to repeat that again. If you do it online, I mean, it's still a business. You still have to build it, but your capital's low. You don't have any liability. And then scalability is infinite, Scale, essentially. Scalability is great, but also there, there is a cap to it. So like, there was another reserve was like, well, isn't the market like flooded now? No, there can't be enough. No. no. There cannot be enough, especially with all these closed gyms. Like, we need as many people out there in force as possible to help you know, get people back on track. It's there's always, in my opinion, there's always going to be room for good coaches and good trainers. Yep. I mean, sure, it's flooded with a bunch of shit butts. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're yeah, you'll comp- stand out like yeah, like, no, I, and, I, and, I love and, that word. Shit and butt. I think that, and I, do, <laughs> I do think that the the old eighty twenty rule will remain true. You know, eighty yeah. percent of the people will only make twenty percent of the money. Twenty percent of the people will make eighty percent of the money. Yeah, but that percentage grow, that that total pie is going to grow. That's right. So twenty percent is going to represent a lot. That's more. right. And so, and I mean, and we're seeing that. And I, you know, I do think what you said was true. What you called not that long ago about the. You know, because the CDC is starting to come out and kind of recant some of the things we're saying, and now we're changing the direction of how important it is to be health and to not be obese with with COVID. A lot of fear motivated. People yeah. Now. So you, I mean, now you're going to get a wave of people that may not have been gym goers before, but now feel like, oh my God, because the CDC says it, and that we're pushing yeah. people in this direction. 
So, I, I mean, that's going to bring a whole new wave of people into the space, I think. Totally, totally. All right, so I had this good conversation uh, with my wife uh, yesterday. So, remember how I told you guys I went out and finally invested in a really nice mattress for the first time in my yep. life? Uh -huh. Like, really nice? Yeah. So, we slept on it last night. It yeah. was freaking amazing. Uh, but we were talking about, you know, the mattress market and how you have these mattresses that are like, and there, no, no affiliation to any of these companies, but... You have mattresses that are like, oh, it's all organic or mm -hmm. no synthetic this or whatever, right? And so she's like, why did we choose like a, a regular really nice bed versus like something like that? And I said, if you actually look, and this is actually a good conversation. If you look at all the factors that affect your health and I look at like organic materials versus maybe inorganic materials and I consider, okay, the inorganic materials may put off a little bit of yeah, this chemical or whatever toxic chemical yeah and it's but it's, it's almost neg negligible but it's more than like let's say Very a bed small. that's totally you yeah. know organic does that offset the incredible sleep i'm going to get with a way more because this is a it's they're engineered this is an engineered well, not bed only that, make you sleep really good i would also make the case or yeah. argument that the stuff that you're washing your sheets in has a more of an impact it does. than the mattress. It does. Have. So it does. You know what I'm saying? So if you're if you go out and go get yeah, yourself a sheets, you yeah. know organic avocado yeah, bed or something, there, but yeah. then you're then you're washing with fucking tide. Yeah. Like it, you know what I'm saying? My bed's made of natural rocks. <laughs> and now, and this is a good conversation because you see a lot of people do this with nutrition. They're like, you know, everything's organic, everything's non-GMO, but you're eating way too much, and a lot of it's garbage. Yeah. Um, you know, calories at the at the top, right? If your calories are too high, it could be all the organic whatever you want, and you're gonna have problems. So let's focus on that first. Then let's look at your proteins and fats, and then let's look at carbohydrates, and then we can start to go down the checklist. And when it comes to sleep, your quality of sleep has such a massive impact on your health mm -hmm. that okay fine you get you know 0.1% less chemicals from your organic bed or whatever but if your sleep is worse then it doesn't matter yeah. because the sleep actually makes a bigger impact as long as it's not lined with asbestos you know <laughs> <you're> good <laughs> Did they have any of those fireproof bed? I don't know. <laughs> they probably did the 70s yeah, it's yeah. A, but yeah it's it's all part of that like it's all so you know i have the sleep routine now so i do the felix gray glasses before I go to bed and I make sure to, you know, I don't eat within a certain period of time or whatever. This was the last missing piece. Now I got the super nice mattress and I was like, oh my God, this is <laughs> incredible. I know, I feel like an old guy, right? No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you is can't it time for bed? That. <laughs> before we went out, so this weekend we went out, we went to dinner on Friday and I, was, I saw Jason, uh, ahead of, I met up with him before you got there and I was like, hey, you gotta ask, I, I, he actually, I don't think he asked you. He goes, I was like, yes, that's Sal about his bed. I said, he, he came up to me, I said the other day, he's so, so proud of himself because he spent, you know, a couple bucks on a bed for the first time ever. <laughs> I was like, don't ruin his day and tell him it's not that expensive because those things Cadillac get really expensive. Bed, you guys. Yeah, like, okay. I, said, I asked him, how do you feel? And he says, oh my God, it was life changing. I'm like, now you get it, bro. You pay for what you get, especially with something like that, man. I know. I'll tell you what, though, I was really disappointed in the chef experience we had. Yeah, so the explains. So you guys are both, it was a date thing for cooking. And so it was we, dumb. It, so we it went, was cool to see everybody. That's about it. You know? So we I'm went. Glad so, I wasn't invited. So we. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't organize. I appreciate it. that, I was you guys. Just, yeah, so. We thought about inviting you. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, John and Jen, uh, who are friends of Katrina and I, they put together this this dinner night, and they Jason and his wife came, Sal and Jessica and me and Katrina, and you're in this like we were really excited about it. like it like it sounded really cool, right? Everybody goes to this like little private chef area, and there's like 16 total people. It's at the Sur, Sur La Table. Yeah, and you know places. No. You know, <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Well, it's so everybody it's was like pretty excited to go do it, and. I if if I wasn't with the group, I would have left. That's how like disappointed I was. I was disappointed in the food. I was really disappointed in the chef. Like terrible personality. Like Jason made the night. Like you know Jay, right? Like oh, he's great, man. Right, he's he can carry a room yeah. and is hilarious. And he was cooking right next to the chef, so he was fucking with them the whole time. Like that's how Jason is. Like he knows the guy's gonna be like a sourpuss. Yeah, he's and, like entertaining. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna have fun with this guy. So he was like poking at him the whole time yep. and making jokes and goofing off. And I mean, he made the night entertaining and worth being there, but. The whole experience, and I've had multiple people tell me like, "Oh my God, you're gonna love it!" So amazing it was terrible. No, it wasn't that great. Would not, I would not literally, do it. Literally, they get we we're supposed to, the first dish was scallops with this like cream sauce or whatever, uh -huh. and I swear to God, we got like four scallops each, 
and that was it. Yeah. yeah. And then we go to make the risotto. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to make the risotto, and it's literally a pound of rice. And we're like, the ratio here is off. <laughs> yes. Like, I can see why how you guys make Economic. your margins. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bro, what a hustle. I mean, you got 16 people. I With 16 people there, I bet we had two pounds of scallops. Maybe. Yeah. We, total. Yeah. Yeah. Total for like 16 people. Yeah. And then I don't know, probably so a 20 pound bag of <laughs> <laughs> risotto. Yeah. I mean, literally, it was like, oh, that's all what we, we threw away a pan like this deep of risotto afterwards because that's all it pretty much was. And then you had a dessert that was a really good dessert, this pear dessert. But I mean, it maybe cost them there, maybe cost them 200 bucks worth of food, maybe. And they're charging eighty nine a head to to be in there. Uh-huh. So yeah. plus we were with it. We were in a room because we had it was a class, right? So mm-hmm. it was us, and then there was other people in there. Yeah, and the other people were boring as hell too. They didn't say a damn word. Uh, lame. Everybody yeah. just following the instruction. Blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah. listen, are you guys all here to be chefs? We're all here to have a good time and enjoy. <laughs> what we're, like, why are you guys sitting here acting like you're taking notes and right. like, let's enjoy it? No, it was, yeah, come it on, was, nerds. No, was, <laughs> yeah. have some fun. <laughs> just, <laughs> I would have said it. Yeah. No, no, it was definitely one of those things that I'm sure that uh, none of us. I mean, I, I want to do the one online where you can do it at your house, right? You, I've seen people do that where you do like a virtual chef at your house. Oh yeah, and we couldn't drink. Well, well, yeah, they they advertised it. No, Check this yeah, out. This they the advertised out, it dude. as uh, scallops, uh, rigatoni, and no, no risotto. Risotto, sorry, R- scallops, risotto. Uh, ch- it was supposed to be chocolate cake, by the way. Chocolate cake and wine. And wine. So we thought we Minus all get wine? there. Nobody drinks. Everybody gets like, oh, this. Cool. And then when we find out it's going to be dry as fuck, everyone's like, that's okay. Wait till the wine comes. We're just going to get fucked up and just yeah. have a good time yeah. with all of our friends. Right. And like everyone's like, like, no, no, you can't drink the wine because we don't have a, a liquor license, but we're using the wine to cook with. Yeah, the wine. Like you, oh. you tricked us. You. Oh. The wine is so you can cook with it. It's that's not, you don't, you don't get to do There's no alcohol, only oh. water. I was so pissed. So it reminded me. So when I was 17, I'll never forget this. When I was 17 years old, uh, I think I've told this story. Well, not this part of the story, but the, I told you guys that I got my, I got pulled, I had four tickets in a year. And so the, the third ticket, I went to go fight in court so I wouldn't lose my license. I also did the traffic school. Yeah. So when I, when I went to the traffic school, it was the first time I've ever been to traffic school. I'm only 17 years old and my buddy and I both were going together and he hits me up. He's like, bro, check this out. I found this place. It's pizza, comedy, and traffic school. Yeah. Like What? <laughs> Like seriously, this Done. is awesome. Done, and I paid like an extra thirty bucks than like the normal price for traffic school or whatever that because it was going to be pizza comedy and fun. And we get there yeah, it was like a Little Caesars, bro. It was well, yeah. They serve pizza at lunch, but the whole pizza comedy and it was a joke. It's not like really anything. They just all name them different things, and there was no comedy uh, at no, all. It was the teacher making. Oh yeah, and, dry he, jokes. and he, I remember dry asking, jokes. "Where's the comedy?" And he made like some bullshit knock knock joke. It was the guy was wow. yeah, it was awful. Eight hours <laughs> of sitting in there, so pissed. I thought hustle like that when we went yeah. to this thing that's oh, how awesome. i advertisement it. ridiculous <laughs> you can only cook with the wine i'm like oh my god this is ridiculous <laughs> anyway all right we got to talk about the all the controversy that's going on right now with uh, joe rogan oh man yeah, oh it's getting, boy it's getting now, heated now i don't know if we said this on the show we might have but when Ro- I, I i know we said this off air but we distinctly had a, d- a discussion where we were talking about rogan and how oh he's going to start getting targeted Politically, because he doesn't fit in a box. Right. He's got a huge reach. Which is dangerous to establish. Yes, and media. now, and that's exactly now what's happening. What you, if you watch what's happening, there's there's definitely the Twitter mob cancel culture thing that happens, but this is not that. This is a a coordinated political attack to. And here's the. What do you guys? By the way, I want to ask you guys. What do you think the goal is? Do you guys think the goal is to get him canceled? Of course. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll dis- I mean, at the bare minimum, discredit the stuff that, that he's putting. That's out. what well, they're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they want to. I mean, it's, it's a power grab. It's to show, it's to flex and show that yes. ultimately, you know, we have the last say. I don't think it's to cancel him. That, if that happened, that's cool. But I don't think that's the goal because, in fact, uh, Rumble just came out and offered him a hundred million for four years. Now right? that's going viral, and I'm like, I mean, I don't know. Does that even warrant a conversation? That ain't happening. That can't happen. That, that'll happen if okay, no. It, it, he's in a contract with Spotify, right. but if Spotify kicks him off, so that's the only he's way. Open. Spotify so far supporting him. Yeah, it, Spotify's already came out. The CEO did a statement yeah, yesterday, so this, the CEO came out. By the way, it's not we, stopping. Huh? We'll see how they we'll see how they handle the pressure because this is not this is not stopping. Well, so now what's interesting to me? Here's what I always when it comes down to money. Okay, and here's what's interesting. Since Spotify has signed Joe, they went from sixty 
to 60 billion down to 30 billion. Yeah. Mm. When they that Neil Young debacle happened, they lost 4 billion dollars. Wow. How is that possible? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, is that Cause four? Well, I know there's a few artists it wasn't just Neil Young that that dropped off, so That's right. it was like some kind of snowball. Hold on, is this that? 4 billion in market share? So I don't know how. I th think that's what it is. I don't know, but it, they went from see. sixty billion in terms of shareholders down to thirty billion. Just their stock price, and so then they price. lost four billion after the. the oh, it's it's their stock price. Yeah, th their stock price now is at a, at one seventy one, which is kind of a low. Just to give you an example. Back in November, it got as high as three hundred. Yeah, I bought it in the two really hundreds. Yeah, so I think it's my bad no. I, so so. He's. I don't think it's to cancel him. I think they know they can't necessarily cancel him because he has such a massive following. Yeah. The sure goal. the hell going to try, though. Well, <laughs> well, isn't it strange? Like, they bought Gimlet Media and somebody else for, like, way more money than they acquired Joe for. Like, in terms Well, of Gimlet that. Media has got a bunch of things underneath it, right? Them, right? The, so yeah, like, so, like, they bought Networks, but there was a couple other, like, shows that they paid a substantial amount more. Yeah, I was no, surprised by that. No, the goal is not to get him canceled. The goal is to delegitimize him completely. Yeah. If they can, because he has, he ha, his platform has so much power. I mean, isn't the same, Is I mean, you're saying that, but isn't the same strategy? I think How's the strategy different? Because they know that he's not going to get canceled. I right? know, you're but how's, how is the strategy different? What would you do differently if you were trying to cancel them? What would, you, what would you be trying to do differently? Yeah. So you're saying you're, you're, oh, saying you're making a statement that they're not trying to cancel, oh, but they're trying I, to dis discredit him. And what I'm saying is the same thing because what would they do different if they were trying to my cancel? Point, my point is, I don't think it would be anything different. My point yeah, is, yeah, I think that they're thing. sitting back and they're saying, we need to, we can't cancel him. He's too big. He's got too big of an audience. If we get him kicked off Spotify, someone else is going to pick him up. I think that the whole plan was we need to delegitimize him yeah. as much as possible. He's keep attacking his character like from every angle. Yes, to the point where he's like Alex Jones. Now, if you are, if you ever go on Joe Rogan, you're a fraud. Or why would you go on a show? I mean, so at what point? So is, is your theory that it's never going to stop? It's just going to keep happening? Because once they go through, like after they they, they make him look sexist, racist. Uh, you know, a conspiracy, homophobic, conspiracy homophobic. guy, transphobic. I mean, once they go down the gauntlet of things and put together all of these clips and, and cherry pick stuff to make him seem even worse, mm -hmm. wh what happens after that? Well, when he doesn't get canceled. now, right? So they started out with COVID misinformation. That was the big one. That didn't really stick. And then it moved on to like sexism and now it's moved to racism. It first started happening when he moved to Texas, started talking about why he moved to Texas, why California is whatever. He started to not sound l like they wanted him to. COVID, the COVID stuff really pushed their buttons. Um, and again, they're trying to delegitimize him. And here's what'll happen. All, by the way, some of these these organization or some of the organization behind what's happening has been linked to a uh, Democratic super PAC. Mm -hmm. I think that these midterms are coming up. This is the pressure. This is where they're going to be all over him. When midterms are over, they're going to leave him alone until it's ready to, to do it again. Mm. He poses a threat, and they want to delegitimize him so he no longer poses a threat. So you think it's 100% politically motivated? 100%. Mm. One, nobody gives a shit that he said the N-word a bunch of times on his podcast, oh, I mean, on old shows. Sure and, you do. If you're, you know, if you're a, a, I mean, a Twitter... I mean, it upset a few of my friends, but yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. What I mean is... Twitter mob guys, I mean, sure. It, no, yeah. what I mean is the people who put that together don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They no, don't care. That. yeah. That's just their political... That's just their, their favorite card to pull. This is a very powerful political... They've weaponized... Well, you've seen that that happened to other people, like celebrities, as examples of you know Dude. taking things out of context. Nobody is safe. It all Nobody together. is safe. Nobody's safe. Yeah. Everything is recorded. Everything you say, everything you do, context changes. Uh, what's acceptable one minute changes to what's acceptable another time. And it's nobody's safe. The Rock, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson came out and said defended him, but then he apologized, which now he's a target for other people. Okay, so and they found my, videos of him doing. My shit. question is this then too: Do you think so? Like we've seen this from you know the left perspective, but from the right perspective, do you see uh, you know the right coming in hard now with like going after the mud slinging, the dirt, and, and like splicing clips together to throw? They're against. just as guilty. What we just yeah. saw a clip like, on um, the CNN and, and like all this that, that came out with their their hosts, uh, you know, in sexual misconduct. Yeah. The you know, the right did it with uh, Chamath. That's right, uh, from all That's in. exactly what I was trying to get to. Yeah, okay. yeah they did it too. They took right. his statement out of context, and you know, it's just oh, because, like it's going to get insane. This this cancel cancel like mudslinging. This going nobody's wow. safe. It's going to self destruct. Yeah, that's right. I think it's going to blow up in all their face. I think it's going to come to a point where people don't care anymore. It's like mm -hmm. going to become white noise, dude.
It's you're 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 calling racist, sexist. You're calling that out so much, both left and right, and everybody's pointing fingers. Nobody is safe. If you're older than like thirty five years old, you're story. fucked. Yeah. You know and or if you, you cried wolf. If you've been in media, right? So if you've been on any social platform or on television, or people have been paying attention to you for any longer than the last five years or more, and you're older than thirty five, you're fucked. Yeah. Yep. You for sure have said something that's inappropriate or text something that isn't right. Like it's like, oh my it's so I it, and, and I think after enough you know, maybe after enough of these people that we we hold up on pedestal, maybe after enough of them fall from grace, mm -hmm. maybe then will everybody be like, "Well, fuck, Jesus, that's my favorite guy, that's my favorite girl." And they're now they're racist, yeah. now they're sexist. What makes me seen cuts of Biden saying worse? Oh, in yeah. Congress, I can't believe he gets a pass. It, well, it's selective outrage, it, but bro. that's the thing. It's like you got to look at it like the hypocrisy of it all. It's of like, course, come on. it's it's po politics is not logic. It's about how you can I mean, manipulate people to feel a particular way for a period of time because the goal is yeah, to delegitimize strategy <laughs> yeah but but here's the thing though I, he's not really getting away with it either because the fact that you know about it is because people on the right have been pushing that agenda right so it's he's not yeah, getting, i well, mean so you can make the same case that trump got away with it too but then the, the people on the left were picking apart okay. all his stuff so okay. so both sides are doing this you're right here's the goal okay here's the and idea it's just right? ramping up is, is here's what the I'm idea seeing. you know how they have uh, when they have an election there's always there's uh what's known as the october is it the october surprise i think it's the october yeah, yeah. surprise that's what you told me yeah and and it's always like something that they'll drop in october because they know it sticks long enough till the election happens because here's what happens shit blows over so they'll, they'll do something to hammer a politician, but if they do it too early, it loses its power and you see this bounce up. Mm. So they're going to hammer Rogan and they're going to keep hammering him until the midterms happen. After that, he's going to be, they're not going to worry about him too much. Unless he makes a lot of noise, they're not going to worry too much about him. Now, the interesting thing is they, mu they might just have, and I don't know, we'll see what they pull up because they can be very cunning and dirty, but they might just have bit off more than they can chew because what there's a lot of people supporting Rogan. A lot of people. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, 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 a, and it might just backfire to the point where it makes him more... Well, it it's interesting because was it Dave Portnoy, the, yeah. the yeah. Barstool? Yeah, so he was tracing back to see... Uh, you know, who was mainly responsible for cutting up these videos and kind of pushing that out there. And I think, like, he's confident he found, like, the three guys that were Well, yeah, because they came after him, too. Yeah. Yeah, he, he traced it back to the same people that were basically c coming after him, and it's it sounds like it's a group yeah. of people that are doing it. Yeah. Speaking of dirty stuff, did you guys see what GoFundMe did with the, all the money raised uh, for so the Canadian So explain Trumpers. what happened. They got up to a ridiculous make, amount of money. to make me angry. Over this that. I heard it was, like, angry. 12. They, they, they got a ton of money. GoFundMe froze it. And then wouldn't give them money and initially said, we can't verify this going to the right people. So we're going to give it to other charities, which everybody's like, excuse me. <laughs> what? Yeah. And then they said, never mind, we're going to refund people. Like, you want to talk about some insanity there. Like, prime, that's like prime yeah. meat for it's conspiracy theft. theorists. Oh, it's terrible. Theft. You can't, <laughs> yeah, you can't reallocate somebody's money that they spent, you know, to go to a very specific now, place. Now, who was it supposed to go to? Does anyone have the, the truckers? answers? It well, I mean, yeah, but that's so vague, bro. Well, I well, so, I mean, yeah, that would that would right. make their point fair. No, well, I think that's not the point. Okay, the point is that they 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 did not do this. Okay, when the BLM thing was happening, nobody knew what the what the hell's going on. Nobody knew, what, and we know now a lot of money went to a lot of bad places. Yeah, and but shit. but but BLM has a a actual organization that you can they have an organization to. also. The truckers do. Yes, they do. Okay, so was it yeah. connected to that GoFundMe? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, okay. it was. Well, then but they, that was the question I was asking. Yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah. answer. Yeah, but they, but they but they now are like we're refunding people. It's very interesting and strange how. And I know, I mean, the conspiracy is like that they're because they're anti-mandate because politically this does not look very good for uh, you know Justin Trudeau and and some of their leaders. I heard it's like oh, one of the largest protests we've ever seen before. For him. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> hiding the whole time, not even like yeah. addressing what was happening in yeah. this country. Yeah, huge. But that's crazy. I can't believe that they did that. I hope they have a really good reason because that's a lawsuit. That's a massive lawsuit. Yeah. Have opinion. you guys are you guys familiar with uh since we're talking about crazy shit? Have you guys are you guys familiar with uh what's called an NFT rug pull? A what? Yeah. No. Rug Fucking pool? crazy. Yeah, you know me going down like the NFT rabbit hole. <laughs> what? You, what? Okay, so, I'm, I'm you know what it is. Every, hey, ever since I started talking about NFTs, and there's, yeah, I have you. I don't know if you guys have experienced this because I know you don't talk about it as much as I do or post about it. But it's like my new favorite thing to like fucking piss off like a community of people that like if you're like part of that community like you're hardcore oh, yeah. about it like you're like you're wrapped dude, up in it. Man. Yes, you. Are, I saw like Jimmy 
uh, what's in Fallon and and like Paris Hilton showing their like ape. Yes. And, it's, and I was just like, oh god, you know, like it, like that's total. I'm like, I'm out. I'm not even interested in the NFT thing. So I was listening to this interview. Remember that guy? Uh, I think I want to say Jake Tran. I think is his name. Yeah, I, yeah, I introduced yeah. you guys. He yeah. did a, he did an interview on this kid that was breaking down these NFT rug pulls. And he says, if you're good, you can do two of these a month. So every two weeks where these people, they'll buy like an NFT that's well known and really expensive. So they're, they're investing like a quarter million sometimes okay. or hundred thousand dollars on like this, this image. So people know like, Oh shit, this person has got clout or they got money. And they, and because all this NFT stuff is on blockchain and, and you can use that as an image, you p protects the people and that's, right. and they're all, everyone's okay with that because that's one of the best parts about it is that you don't know who, who everyone is. Well, the problem with that is you've got these NFT rug pulls that are happening where these people will buy like an expensive NFT. They'll put that as their profile. They'll build Twitter. They'll build a discord. They'll build all this stuff like that. They'll, they'll copy like a trending, like let's say board eight, uh, board eight yacht club or whatever yeah. board yacht. Eight. I don't know if I'm saying that right. You guys know what I mean, right? that like their whole like blueprint on how they're making money and they'll co basically copy and paste like a similar like you know formula of what we're going to do what we're going to give our people hype up the discord get in there and get in the community and tell them what's coming and release a bunch of this shit and they make fucking 10 15 million real quick and then boop just and delete and disappear. Oh, it's like a <laughs> and then fire up another one. Fucking two like weeks a, later, it's like, a, it's like a stock pump and dump, bro. Dude. Yes, that's like a pump and dump. Yes, yeah. and it's getting real popular for people to do this. It's, it's, it's not regulated. It's like in in the in the trading world. You had to know that was coming. In the trading world, this is old school. You would buy shitty, worthless stock, and then you would pump it up to a bunch of people, drive the, the shares up, and then sell your your bit, make your money. And now the crashes. now the thing that's crazy though, and where it's different than pump and dump, it's a lot easier to get track the people that are involved that were doing that, mm -hmm. where this is all protected on the blockchain. So these people go in, create this wow. whole thing on the blockchain, and they walk away with all this money. Ain't nobody do nothing about it. Dude. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, did that's you did, did you hear North Korea is has these hackers or whatever that apparently have hacked and stole a bunch of crypto money to fund their like nuclear program? Have you heard of this? No. Yeah. Apparently they're they're I gotta read so this. they can hack now and well bro they've proven that already Let's, yeah it's not the that's it's problem it's not the blockchain it's like the wallets and stuff that yeah are right open. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, thing like that uh, Snowden said that was why he mm -hmm. he came out and made that statement about why he's that's like what until, I was worried about the whole yeah time. until the wallets are as, as safe as the actual uh, cryptocurrency then yep. it doesn't make any sense right here yeah. Nor this is this is a UN report missile program funded through stolen crypto so. So the North Korean cyber attacks have stolen millions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency to fund the country's missile programs. So, to, you know, people who say you can't steal it, the weak link is not the the blockchain, but rather the, the way people store their crypto and stuff. And apparently Man. this is from the UN. North Korean hackers did this to fund their missiles. Jeez. So I know this whole thing's interesting. This is getting crazier and crazier. Uh, it's, I'm wondering where it's going to be in just like five years from now. Like, is it going to, I mean, are we going to see this massive correction and we're going to see totally. just a lot of this stuff? We're already seeing a correction. Crypto's already gone down quite a bit, but I think you're going to see a, I think you're going to, there, there's value to it, but it's so bubbly and frothy and, and full of It'll just stick. Hype. It'll be just be a, like one Of course, it's like the dot com the, bus. The, the technology's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where you guys are. Like, if uh, yeah. So I pay attention to all this. Like, the way it's going to be for cars, a watch. I mean, how it, it, that's going to be a very- Tickets to a show. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be a very yeah. powerful tool in the future. It will be how we do things. I mean, it's a very nice way to protect yourself when you buy something of, of great value. You now have like somebody else try and steal it, resell it, or or fix it, or work on it. Like that'll come up right away. That it's not it's somebody else's. It'll be easy to trace and track. So there, there's tremendous value in this technology. Yeah. It ain't going away. I 100% stand by it. But boy, is there going to be a lot of scams there's on lots the way of there. Shenanigans right now yeah. to weave through. Yeah, the yeah. dot com bus was like that, right? It's like, oh my god, the internet's going to change the world, and we, it did. Yeah. But you had so much hype or, and excitement and, again, that frothiness around it that any dot-com anything was valued so much, and then you had a crash, which washed out a ton of these companies. So I think it'll be, it'll be something similar, in my opinion. Hey, real quick, look, if you like soda but hate the sugar and the calories, go try Olipop. Now, Olipop, nothing artificial. So everything in there is real. It's very low calorie, I believe like 30 calories per can, but they're actually good for your gut health. These are actually sodas designed to feed good bacteria and reduce inflammation in the gut. They're very gut friendly, very, very low in calorie, uh, all natural. 
I love them. And they have flavors that are like the sodas you drank when you were a kid. So if you're interested, head over to mindpumppartners.com, click on Olipop, and then the code for the discount is MINDPUMP. Go check them out. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Kara from Colorado. Kara, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, Sal. Hey, guys. Uh, before I get going, I just wanted to say, um, so I was a trainer from 2012 to 2015, and I loved the industry. I did some fitness shows at the time, and I just didn't see an out, so I kind of stopped everything, qualified for nationals in bikini, and stopped from there. Did my own thing for five years or so. 2020, I said enough is enough. I went back to my coaching business, and in November, I started training again. Uh, probably because of you guys, because I heard I found your podcast maybe in April, and I just want to thank you for giving language to all the bullshit in the fitness industry. Um, yeah, all right. yeah, I just really resonate to what y'all say more than anyone else, and I'm just so appreciative. So I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you do. Yeah, thank, thank you for those awesome words. Thanks. Cool. So yeah, my question that I asked was. Um, I heard you, Sal, talk about Persitan and choline in an episode mm -hmm. pretty early on, um, an earlier episode. And I was just wondering, so col I got some choline and it's really been helping with my brain fog as I'm coming off of having COVID. So I'm wondering if there's a way to go about looking up nootropics. And I don't really know much about uh, nootropics drugs, but I like supplements. I like playing around with supplements and I'm just interested in holistic health. And yeah. Cool. No, it's a good question. So Perisitam is a drug from the Racitam uh, categories of drugs. So it's actually a synthetic product. It's a prescription in some countries, uh, but here in the US, it's uh, like a gray market. So it's not really regulated. You could buy it over the counter. And it's loosely, I guess, categorized as a um, nootropic. So in some studies, it's been shown to improve Things like verbal fluency in people who have uh, noticed declining uh, verbal fluency or memory recall in people with, you know, who have like early stages of maybe dementia and stuff like that. So a lot of people have messed around with these substances to see if it's done anything for them. Um, I'm one of those people. I've messed around, you know, I, I make no, it's not a mystery that I like to mess around with compounds and supplements and stuff to kind of see what happens. Now, here's a deal with uh, Persitam. This is my personal experience and then also the experience that I've, I've had, uh, you know, having other people try it. For me, it's got a bit of a racy feel. I notice maybe a, an improvement in some things, but I also notice that I crash when it kind of wears off and don't feel so good. So this is why I've never really used. And I've tried lots of the Racitam molecules. There's Anaracitam. There's lots of different, you know, Oxiracitam, I believe is another one. There's Lots of different types, and they're all supposed to be a little different. I wasn't really a huge fan. I gave some to Adam, Justin, and Doug for fun, mm. uh, just to see what would happen. And they all had headaches and yeah. didn't, didn't feel good uh, from them at all. Um, choline is a natural compound. Probably should be labeled essential. Um, it's not currently labeled essential, but I think it probably should be. You find it in certain foods like egg yolks. And if it's low, supplementing with it can help with, you know, kind of cognitive performance. So choline's pretty good. Caffeine can help some people if they're fatigued. But I will say this, um, when it comes to substances and, and supplements to help with, I guess, mental acuity or to help with brain fog, they pale in comparison to, and I, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, they pale in comparison to things like diet, exercise, stress management, and sleep. They really don't. They're really poor substitutes. Like, if you have poor sleep, caffeine can help, but it doesn't do at all what good sleep would do for all of those things. And uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. But as far as the race attempt drugs are concerned, um, I'm not. A, I'm not really a big fan. That's why I talked about them once, and then I really haven't really brought them up except for maybe to talk about kind of that gray market part of the supplement industry that I, I think is interesting, but I don't think that they're, they're really great uh, for, you know, what people say they're for. So what, it, what do you think? Cause I, 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 yeah, I didn't have a good experience with these at all. Um, what are some recommendations though, that you would give her for like natural nootropics or is there, are those considered mm -hmm. nootropics because they're, because they're natural? Like is it, is it, yeah. What are some, what are some natural uh, substances that she could take instead of that? If she wanted, you know, to the thing with the, 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 
word nootropic, if you look up what it's supposed to mean, it literally means uh, a substance that uh, upon taking will improve cognitive performance. Now, technically, like I, I mentioned caffeine, technically caffeine is not a nootropic. However, the reason why I put caffeine in that category is if you are fatigued, your mental performance will drop. Taking caffeine does improve mental performance in that particular context. Um, so that's why I like to put that there. Some people would put drugs like Adderall or Ritalin in that category. However, there's interesting studies that show that they don't really improve cognitive performance. They just, ma they just make people more interested in the boring shit that they don't want to mm. be interested in. And so that makes people feel like they're you know, they're smarter when they take them. Now, exogenous ketones, would that be a classification of nootropic? Because I know it does help, like, uh, you know, my my clarity in terms of my sharpness of and memory recall. You know what's weird about that? So going into ketosis for some people makes a big difference. I would imagine it's probably people who either, A, have issues with blood sugar or insulin. Um, you know, like Alzheimer's is like type 3 diabetes, some people will call it. Or you're eliminating lots of food intolerances. And so you feel less inflamed, less bloated, a little bit sharper from doing so. You can experiment with that, Kara. You can go on a ketogenic diet. Um, just make sure you get adequate sodium. I want to say that. A lot of people will go ketogenic, feel yeah. like garbage, and think they, they call it the keto flu. Oh my God, I feel... Uh, typically, it's when you go on a ketogenic diet, you drop carbohydrates, you're, you're going to lose a lot of water. And when you lose a lot of water, you need a lot more sodium. And so, you know, like we work with a company called LMNT. It's a great product if you want to drink something that tastes good with salt. Otherwise, salt the shit out of your food, add a little salt uh, to your water. That usually makes up the difference. But also, you go on a ketogenic diet, you're gonna, you can expect some, some performance drops in strength. So, if you, so it's a bit of a trade off. Like you're not going to be as strong, not have much stamina and endurance, but you may feel sharper doing something like that. Fasting can some, do that really quick. Like if you did a 24 hour fast, you may notice, oh my God, I feel sharper. What is it in the Organifi Pure that makes me feel that way? So products like that are more like, you're looking at, I'm glad you said that because uh, I was going to go there. I totally forgot. There are compounds that help with brain health. So like lion's mane, for example, is one of those things. So if you took lion's mane, you might not know, you're probably not going to notice anything until you take it for two or three mm -hmm. weeks, right? And then, and then what they'll show is it's, it's improving brain health a little bit over time. Um, things that help with your gut. So like Organifi's Pure has got certain compounds that'll do that. That's why when you take it- digestive enzymes in there too, right? A little bit, yeah. So that's why when you take it over time, you start to kind of notice like, oh, I feel, you know, I feel kind of good. Well, when what I, I like it. about it, it's more, it's more <clears throat> natural uh, ingredients in yeah. terms of like what they use. So for me, like it, it didn't have that. I don't know if it's because of the artificial blend uh, that you get from the race of Tams, but that's what really like, gave me a headache. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't get a headache from this and it does over time. It, it really does help with your memory it, recall. It does. It's just one of those- you, you know what it is. Okay. If you take something, this is a general rule. If you take something that you feel right away, you can almost always bet that you're going to get this adaptation response in the body and the brain where it starts to downregulate receptors and change its own production of certain chemicals. And so then over time it stops to be as effective. And then when you go off of them, there's this kind of rebound effect where you feel, you know, kind of crappy for a week or two. And it just, it, it, again, it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't substitute lifestyle by any stretch of the imagination. Now for someone with COVID brain fog, um, this one's a really interesting one. I personally, now I'm not going to recommend this. I'm not a doctor, but what I would do care if I was you is I would see if going on a ketogenic diet for a week or two makes a big difference. I, I have a hunch that the anti-inflammatory effects of the ketogenic diet would have a positive effect on somebody um, like you, but you have to experiment with it and see, you know, how you feel. But I, I hope that helps you out. Really, there's really nothing out there that's going to make a huge difference aside from your, you know, things that might help improve brain health in conjunction with, you know, good diet, exercise, and sleep. You Kara, know, have you tried the Organifi Pure yet? I haven't. No. Give Give that a try. I mean, Justin and I both love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I had a bad experience with the race tin stuff. So. Yeah. How, do, how's your sleep, by the way? Uh, sleep is pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I've been I've been really toned in since I like quit my day job and um, just working for myself. So it's been awesome. How? Um, just just off of COVID, I just noticed like brain fog and like a significant increase with the choline. So I was just wondering from That's there. Good. I'm like, oh, this stuff is great. 
How long how um long ago did you get over COVID? Uh, maybe like two weeks ago. Okay. You know, here's some good news. Um, the, the, that brain fog typically lasts maybe a month or two at the most. I know Adam felt fatigued for like, what was like six weeks or so after? Yeah, I'd say about six weeks. And then you, and it kind of got better after yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, my wife, the same thing. So, um, you know, there's very, very small percentage of people from what I've read where it lasts really long. It's usually from what I've read and, and people I know, it's like a month or two afterwards at most. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Does that help? I hope that helps. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's interesting. Um, Persitan, Persitan sounds like Kratom in a, in a way. It's not at all. Kratom is okay. a, I, yeah. lo I love Kratom. It's yeah. nothing like that for sure. No, uh, no okay. yeah. but it, hold on. Kratom, you, you will have, it, Kratom does have addictive properties and you will have withdrawal if you take it regularly and then go off. Kratom, that feeling that you would get from Kratom is the same thing that you get from like an opiate, right? So it pairs with the opiate receptors yep. and you get that feeling of like happy and joy. Yeah. So it's, uh, less to do with like the mental clarity and more of that like but mood yeah, yeah yeah it always puts me in a good mood yeah but i, I when i when i talk to people about kratom and I, i'm afraid i'm not afraid i'm very cautious to talk about it on the show because of the withdrawal people can oh it's very it's off. very addictive well, you know i found myself you know starting off with like six of those 500 milligram pills and then quickly to eight then quickly to yeah. 10 then 12 yeah. so you quickly move up the body adapts to it and then you feel like you got to take more just to keep up with it um, I also have shared in the past about, uh, you know, I battled with uh, opiate addiction in the past. So it's something that is, I'm very aware of. And it's so like I the lesser of an, of an evil, right? Yeah. It's yeah. way, way, the withdrawal is bad, but nothing like an opiate. Right. Yeah. Right. But it could get there though. I know people that keep scaling up before yeah. you know it, you're taking 30 or 40 of those things and then good oh, luck, man. you know, yeah. so. Definitely. I had to give it up. I was like, nah, this isn't working after a while. <laughs> you sound a lot like me, Kara. I, I, can, I, I understand the feelings. It's a good time, but you got to be careful. Exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. Thank hey, you, Kara. Thanks for calling in. Thank you so much. No Take problem. care. Yeah, I, 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 uh, boy, I identify a little bit with what she's saying. You know, you, you, you look for things to that you either can change your state of mind or help with certain you know, challenges you have. And in some ways it can become a little valuable, mm -hmm. but like when it comes to like improving your mental clarity, like, man, if I get a good night of sleep, there isn't a thing that I've ever yeah. tried or stack that I've ever tried that even comes close to well, that just that. Hands down. Yeah. Nothing comes close to, to something like that. And I think that and, and actually just being fasted going to stuff like that. I yeah. always feel mm -hmm. that one. I'm on, that's the one. So I hate working out fasted, but I love to podcast yes. or do something where I need to be sharp. Totally. I notice a huge difference when I'm just not fed. It's wild. Yeah, I know. When I'm when we're gonna go in and do like a, a big interview or something, I really need to, like I want to really want, want to be sharp. I'll fast. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it, it, it does make a difference for me. Yeah. But working out performance wise, that totally different. Our next caller is Chris from Minnesota. Chris, what's happening? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? Good. All right. Uh, first off, I have to do the uh, obligatory thank you for uh, the content you produce. Uh, I really like that you guys make uh, the health and fitness space uh, entertaining to listen to on a daily basis. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. That's okay. all, Justin. No. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, my question is about uh, routine and consistency. Uh, I'm getting back into lifting and fitness after about a year-long break, and I'm starting into MAPS Anabolic. Uh, I've learned that I'm a very routine-driven person, and when I struggle to maintain consistency, uh, it's usually because uh, my weekly routine gets thrown off for one reason or another. So the actual question I have is what other hacks and daily routines have you guys found to help yourselves or past clients make uh, health and fitness a part of their daily life? Oh, did yeah. you, Chris, did you listen to the, I did an, we did an episode or was it, Q, I don't know if it was q &A or an episode that we did. And I talked about the weekend hack. Did you hear me talk about that yet? Uh, was that with uh, Jason Phillips? Oh, it might have been with yeah, Jason. Was it recent? Yeah, I think so. It was It was a recent episode. It might have been with Jason. I can't remember. But I, basically what I was talking about was uh, making your, like, win the weekend and then the, the week tends to follow, right? So in the past, uh, you know, I used to train really hard and consistent 
Monday through Friday, I was the most dialed on my diet, didn't miss my routine because my whole whole routine was there. I'd work, I had work schedule where I got to work at the same time and left work at the same time. And because I had scheduled clients all day long, I had to be very regimented about what time I ate. And so it was really easy for me to stay tight Monday through Friday. And then Saturday or Sunday would be, oh, you know, I sleep in, I'm tired. And then maybe I'll watch a little football on Sundays. Hey, if I'm going to enjoy <laughs> off the diet, maybe that's when I'll have my pizza, you know? So what I found was uh, many of these weekends, I would easily have one or two days that actually would kind of cancel all the good work that I did in the, the previous week because I was moving so little, sometimes not training. And then also if I were to overconsume, it would be on those days. And so I had switched this mindset up about, I don't know, seven years ago or so, maybe even longer, where I said, okay, I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on myself uh, throughout the week. I know I'm going to have some days off or I miss workouts or maybe I you know eat off the meal plan, but I'm going to win Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, um, that's going to become my day where I'm, I'm more tight around the diet. And then if I want to cut loose during the week, I will. And what I found was it sets the tone for the week. And because it's easier for me to be consistent during the week, even though I gave myself the flexibility to go off the plan or, or stop or take a day off, I wanted to stay consistent. And just, you know, winning the weekends was a huge hack for me. So I don't know if that's something that you've implemented or tried, uh, but anybody that I've taught that to uh, sees a, a big difference in their consistency. Yeah, you know, Chris, I'm going to comment a little bit on your question because I don't think people realize just how important this question that you're asking is of all of the, for the average person of all the factors that they need to consider when it comes to their workout routine, the most important factor is how can I organize things or do things in a way that will lead to consistency because a bad workout, I mean, of course, if it doesn't hurt, you know, all that stuff, but a, but a workout that's not that effective done consistently is more effective than a super effective workout that's done consistently. It's the most important thing for the average person. If I had to look at everything, I'd say, just be consistent, number one, then let's look at kind of everything else. It's like the biggest rock, okay? Here's the single yep. the single most effective thing I've ever seen uh, help someone with consistency. And this is only if this particular thing works for the person. But if it does, it works better than anything else. And I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a background. You know, when I managed gyms, and I managed and worked in gyms for a very long time, when you do that for a while, you notice trends in your facility. So, you know, you work in these big box gyms, you see crowds of people coming in at different times, you start to notice trends when it's busy, when it's not busy, certain months are busier than other months, mm -hmm. who's more consistent versus who's less consistent. And there is no group more consistent in the gym than the morning group, okay? The, the 6 a.m., the 5, 6, and 7 a.m. crew, whatever you, whatever you want to label them, is by far the most consistent member base that you'll find in your gym. The evening people, super transient. You'll have a small group that always show up at night, but it's like the most transient is after work by far. The middle of the day, you know, maybe not as transient, but not nearly as consistent. It's the early morning crew that you go to the gym. When I would go in at 6, 7 a.m., mm -hmm. it was always the same people. In the, and it was like that for years. It was the same people all the time, by far. Now, I, this is for me too. Now, I don't like working out first thing in the morning, if I'm comparing it uh, to other times in terms of performance and strength and endurance and all that stuff. But the reason why I work out in the morning is there's no better thing I've ever done for consistency. If I start my day with my workout, I'm going to work out. If I end my day with my workout or interrupt my day with my workout, all kinds of stuff can get in the way. Even if you're fanatical, it just becomes a big pain in the butt. Work goes a little longer than you thought. Uh oh, this popped up. Got to pick up the kids. I'm tired whatever. But if it's the first thing I do when I wake up, it's the first thing that I do. And I'm the most consistent ever when I do that. So if it works for you, because this doesn't work for everybody, but if it works for you, start your day with your workouts. And if that's what you always do, there, like I said, there's nothing I've ever seen to improve consistency. No single thing I've ever done to improve consistency better than that. Yeah. I, I just wanted to add, I guess, too, in terms of like things that I, I try to figure out initially with clients, like what what's going to benefit them the most in terms of them coming back, having consistency, but also what's going to move the needle a bit more uh, that's really not invasive. So like if I'm looking at it in terms of lifestyle, like Adam's talking about winning the weekend, you know, I'm looking at certain things that will improve their posture, improve their mood, improve their energy, 
all these things that we can ritualize. So one thing I had clients do was uh, something they'd normally do, like take a shower in the morning, they do a wall press in the shower or they do it after they're done. They do something very simple that like covers a lot of the bases of the upper body uh, and it sets your shoulders right, sets your neck, sets everything in the upper body right, posturally. Uh, and then the other one was like a 90-90, maybe that I'd have them do before they sit down uh, to, to relax. They do that first thing and watch TV or do something like that. Uh, and then, you know, if, if they're eating, if try to walk after they eat their meals. Something like that where it's like, it's very action and it's something that they can keep doing that doesn't really require a lot of effort or thought, uh, which then builds momentum and builds uh, going into then meeting and seeing me uh, for the workouts. Chris, I have an, another hack that's more recent um, for me now, right? So I used to be a, an all or nothing type of guy when it comes to workout and diet. And either I'm dialed in and consistent and crushing the gym or I'm super inconsistent. And Something that's changed uh, in the last probably five or six years that I'm really good about doing now that I would have never done in my 20s, which is be okay sometimes with maybe that this workout today is just squats or just Turkish get-ups. And because sometimes I'll be sitting at home and it'll be like the weekend and I know I told myself I'm going to get a lift in and I'm just like, man, I am not feeling like a... 50 minute hard training session in the gym. And so I'll, I'll play this game where I'm like talking myself out of it. And then I end up not doing it. Whereas now I kind of give myself this flexibility that, you know what, I don't, I don't need to go to get 50 minutes and let's just go get four sets of squats out of them. I can go get four sets of squats. That doesn't take very much time. And what I find one, uh, doing something like squatting, deadlifting, Turkish get ups, overhead pressing, there's such big, good, gross motor movements that they have so much, uh, they have so much carryover and so much benefit just from doing them that it's okay sometimes for me just to have a workout where that's all I do. But what actually ends up happening more often than not is I go in with that attitude that I've accepted that maybe I'll just do four sets of squats. And then once I get it going, I feel good. And then I end up wanting to finish the workout. But a lot of it is the mental game of accepting that, hey, you know what? I don't have to do a full 50 minute workout. Maybe I'll just go in and do four sets of this movement that I know is so valuable and allowing myself that that freedom to be able to just do that sometimes. And again, what I find is I end up doing more or finishing the workout. And even if I didn't, I still got a great, you know, four or five sets in of squats, which like I said, has tremendous benefit to yeah. it. Um, Chris, do you have maps prime by any chance? I do. Yeah. That's okay. been uh, a real help. Awesome. Because the, the, the stuff that Justin was talking about obviously is in the compass test. So I just want to make sure you had that. So you knew how to do the wall press and what he was referring to. So I, I hope that all helped you out. Yeah, it does. I, you know, I really, the, the morning thing you mentioned is, is probably the biggest thing and probably also helps in developing a sleep routine too, which totally. is something mm -hmm. I struggle with as well. So totally. there's probably more benefits than just being consistent at the gym. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for calling in. Well, I really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, okay, no problem. Right. Thanks, thanks, Chris. You know, I remember. You know, I remember uh, managing <sighs> like when I first. I don't want to say. Man, I was even before I became a manager. This was when I was like, a, you know, a weekend manager or whatever. And I would go in hella early because I, you know, I was super competitive. I didn't have kids, and you know, I wasn't married. Live with my parent at my parents' house, so I could just go be there as long as I want. And I would show up at five a.m., six a.m. Right, and I, I would do it. And I remember. Like I remember it took like a, maybe a couple months. And I remember thinking it's the same 30 people. Every time I come in at 5 AM, every time I come in at 6 AM and the rest of the time in the gym, it was always like, you'd, you'd see your regulars, but it was always like this changing crowd. Right. Cause yeah. you know, we were in big box gyms and that's when I, and I remember thinking to myself, like who the hell wants to work out at 5 AM or 6 AM? This is ridiculous. And then of course, as you get older, you have kids, you have stuff that, and it's like, okay. Well, you, yeah. You can't interrupt it that way. It's, it just makes perfect sense. And, you, and it just, it, the only problem is the challenges is the whole, okay, I got to wake up early. You know, I got to, I got to do that. And well, then I got to go to bed on time. I've never felt as strong that early in the morning. Yeah, you know? totally. And, and you know, so yeah, you have to kind of work your way through that, but I agree. It is probably the best strategy in terms of being able to uh, repeat that because nothing's going to like come in the way of your workouts typically. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And, I, and I do want to say, you know, kind of reiterate this, that the, of all the factors that you have to consider and they're, they're all important, uh, what kind of workout I do, intensity, sets, reps, exercise, that's all very important. We spend a lot of time talking about that, but if people just figured out the consistency piece for themselves, they would be 80% of the way there, you know? Yeah, I think, I mean, there's no doubt that the the 5 a.m. crew is always the most consistent in every gym. But a lot a lot for me has been 
having empathy for myself when it comes to like, I have to get this routine. Much of my, my drive in the gym was, you know, uh, all about this look that mm -hmm. I was always trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. and it just wasn't worth it if you weren't all. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so I, I had this yeah. pressure of like, if I'm not making gains in, you know, muscle size or reducing body fat, I'm losing or I'm not, I'm not progressing. I'm not moving in the right direction. And so I had a lot of that attitude when I looked at my my lifestyle, and as I've gotten older, I realized like, wow, the real reason why I'm doing this is to be able to move and play with my son, to be healthy and to be, you know, yeah. mobile. And like, when you think of those goals, if your goal is you know longevity and overall health and mobility, it doesn't always have to be this 50 minute. Okay you know, sweating, killing yourself routine. Sometimes it could be doing prime movements. Like Justin's saying, like, you know what? I really need to address my posture. I haven't done any of that. So just sitting there doing the wall test for 15 to 20 minutes, like being okay with sometimes the routine doesn't look like this, you know, structured it's 50 minutes. Yeah. Sometimes you're just, sometimes maybe it's just a good walk for an hour. Maybe like there's been times like that on the weekend where I just, man, I'm not, I need to go lift weights, but you know what? Even though I'm not into in it to go lift weights right now, I can throw on a jacket and go outside and go for a nice walk for an hour and go go for a hike. Like, you, know the, you know what the irony of that is, Adam? Is that you're without, and I know you know this, but for someone listening, the side effect of that is you end up looking better anyway right. because you're just consistent, right? Mm -hmm. So because you're not all or nothing and you're doing something, right? the side effect of that is what you would want from being all in all right. the time, you know? So that's that's the the irony of the whole thing. Our next caller is Gabby from California. Gabby, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi. Um, I have been having an issue with my knee. Um, I got MAPS Prime and Prime Pro. Um, but, it, I mean, I work long hours. I'm a bartender, so I'm standing a lot. Um but I've tried, you know, like 90-90. I've tried stretching. It seems to hurt a little bit more when I'm trying to come out of a stretch. So I don't know if it's helping or if it's hurting. So I'm a little bit lost because I can't really, I mean, I can squat, but not that heavy. Or if I go heavy, it hurts. And then if I don't squat, I just, I don't know. It kind of sucks. Okay. Um, so try this. This is like a miracle cure. Take Icy Hot, Ben Gay, Stop and Tiger it. Bomb. <laughs> Whatever he's going to say. Yeah, I'm joking. It's, it's, yeah. Totally garbage. joking. Okay, so I, I know you wrote your question up here, and you had asked why MAPS Prime and Prime Pro don't have a knee section. So let me address that first, Gabby, and then I'm going to ask you a few more questions. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So the reason why we don't have specific knee mobility movements in those programs is because knee pain issues – tend to come from almost almost always the ankles or the hips, okay? so And the reason being is if you look at the knee joint, it only moves kind of in two directions. It, do, it flexes and extends. It doesn't rotate and it doesn't bend laterally. It only flexes and extends. The ankle and the hip are, they move all over the place. They, they move laterally, they rotate, they twist. They have lots of movement in comparison to the knee. And so what happens is if the ankle or the, or the hip lacks strength and stability, then the ligaments of the knee tend to create that mm -hmm. stability. And then over time, you can create problems or even in the short time, you can get yourself an injury. Which is also why she's probably feeling pain when she gets in and out of the 90-90. Yeah. So yeah. Here's, oh, here's a tip with the 90-90, by the way. Whenever you're in a position where you're externally or internally rotating the leg. So in 9090, you have both, right? One leg is externally rotated. That's the front leg. And then one is internally rotated. That's the back leg. Make sure you flex your ankle. Bring mm -hmm. your toes towards your shin. Because what that'll do, what that'll do is that'll bolster, bolster the knee joint a little bit. Because what it sounds like is it sounds like you've got a little bit of inflammation and pain in some of the ligaments that prevent the rotating of the knee. And because you're rotating the hip and those are tight or lack stability, the knee is doing is trying to stabilize with the ligament. So does that make sense where you take your you take your foot and you bring your toes towards your shin and flex that while you're in position? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I okay. would also have her foam roll before she gets in the 99. Yeah. That'll help. She might be so tight that when she's getting in that, that's why right. I feel she probably feels pain in yeah. the well, Especially I'm trying to see of like how it's tracking, you know, if, if you're really like tight along your IT band and like along the sides, like Adam said, that would help to kind of, you know, help put you in a better position. Also too, if you have access to yoga blocks, 
Um, this is to uh, another way to kind of regress, you know, some of the intensity there within the 90-90 position. You elevate, you know, your leg a bit or you have, you know, a, your hand is able to kind of, um, you know, start from a higher position, which makes it uh, more easy to get into that position. Yeah. And, and also don't forget uh, ankle mobility. So like if my knees bother me, it's I used to think it was my hips all the time. Um, and I'd work on hip stuff and it would help a little bit, but not a ton. And then I learned later it's all, it was all in my ankles. So mm. working on my ankle mobility and even, you know, supplementing a little bit with my ankle mobility made a huge difference. Well, so. one test of that, that Dr. Brink's done with us quite a bit is if, if you squat, if you squat with your heels elevated and you don't feel pain and it feels pretty, um, natural and easy. Um, you know, that's something that, uh, a lot of times will, you need to look at, at your ankle mobility and, and, you know, address that specifically. There's a YouTube video that I did. I believe it's uh fixed knee pain. Doug, is that? Yes, it is. Is that yeah. what it is? So we brought it up on a show before. And again, we'll put it in the show notes. Okay. So ch check that video really out, Gabby, video. because I, I believe I, I addressed the foam rolling. I believe I addressed the ankle mobility all in there. So that's something that you can do uh, before you get it. But that's the the reason why uh, there's nothing in Prime or Prime Pro related knees, because it's going to be ankle or hip always. So that's kind of the area, all the exercises and work in that in those programs that's centered around the ankles mm -hmm. and the hips is basically where you need to be. If it's really uncomfortable to get in the 90-90, there's a good chance. I don't know for sure, but there's a good chance that it's related to your IT. And then in that video mm -hmm. I, I just uh, referenced, you'll, it shows you how to foam roll the IT. That'll give you a little bit of relief before you go into the 90-90, and then that should help you out. And that's just something that you want to practice religiously. This is such a visual thing, too, is, uh, us trying to, like, you know, figure this out and, and cue and coach. Uh, one thing, like, so do you notice at all if your knees travel outward or inward when you squat down? So, um... I normally like, I feel like I have, it's more comfortable for me to have like a little bit of a wider stance and have my feet pointed out a little bit. Um, and then I know like your knees are not supposed to cave in obviously. So I work on like pushing them out. Mm, so it's more, uh, yeah, actually rotates more comfortable. Yeah. So, and it's always been that way. And I had been squatting for like, I don't know, maybe like two years before I had any issues. Okay. Um, and pretty heavy. And then I think it was when I started like running and squatting, um, maybe, I don't know. I think one day, I remember one day specifically, um, I had ran like two miles and then that same day happened to be leg day. And I just like went really IT, Yeah. IT, IT for sure. Really I, yeah. hundred percent yeah. IT I would, for sure. After getting tight like that from the squats and then going out and running like that, I guarantee that when you, have you ever foam rolled your IT before? Um, I have. So the thing is, it's mostly like the inner side of my knee. Like it hurts more the closer I bring. Um, like if I sit crisscross or like if I go from pigeon to active pigeon, I can feel like a okay. sharp. Pain yeah, this is your side. meniscus is trying to prevent your knee from twisting. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what that's what that that's what that is. So if you look at your knee joint, there's there's ligaments that prevent it from sliding forward, sliding back, bending laterally. And then you have the meniscus that prevents it from twisting. And so the reason why you're having pain when you're in pigeon or a 90, 90 is because your hips are rotating. So your, your leg is turning out and the, there's a little bit of lack of stability there. And so your meniscus is holding tight and you're probably giving yourself uh, a little bit of inflammation with that. Here, here's something. So the flexing of the foot will make a big difference, by the way. Um, it, it might not fix it completely, but it'll help you do some of these positions. So you got to bring the toes back. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're activating the tibialis and that provides a little bit of stability uh, in the knee, or at least it prevents the meniscus from doing um, so much. The other piece of advice I'd have for you, Gabby, is uh, for while you're working on this, I would do mostly unilateral exercises for your lower body. So I would avoid squats, uh, front squats, uh, those types of exercise. And I would do... I'd also take it easy on the running too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Take, take it easy on the running. And I would do unilateral stuff. Lunges, Bulgarian split stance squats, single leg toe touches. Just until things start to feel better, I'll go lighter and go slower. Um, just to allow the inflammation to, to, to get a little bit better before you progress back to your bilateral movements like squats. Okay. All right. 
Yeah, cool. that sounds awesome. Thank All right, cool. you, Greg. Hope that helps. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, Gabby. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, the the whole knee issue um, is interesting because you know what you know what one of the challenges is. You'll say to somebody, "Well, it's usually the ankle or the hip, mm. right?" And they'll be like, "But I got imaging done, and I have you know patellar chondromalacia, or I have inflammation of well, the yeah." There's definitely the compensations happening, yes. ligament wise, but that's not ideal. No, and it's in in the you know that rotating aspect of like for example yeah. in in uh, jujitsu, there's a submission called a heel hook, and it's literally you're, you're twisting the leg while keeping their hips stationary, and people think it's a it's a foot lock, but it's not. It's tearing your knee. Yeah, right totally apart and that and that's what's happening the ankle moves yeah. but the knee doesn't and then you get the the problem yeah we just got to get in better alignment and then you know everything sort of uh, uh we got to strengthen the supporting cast so that way like it keeps it stabilized yeah this will bother me too same thing yeah if, if it's and it's my ankles if my ankles are really tight and i squat heavy that's exactly what i'll feel i'll feel on the inner outer part of my knee i just want to highlight too this is another reason why we tend to hammer the whole running thing so much too because this is super common it's super it's common like that gasoline on a problem yeah and then if, she, if she's getting real tight from her squats and she's already got this this condition or issue going on or the lack of ankle mobility and stability and hip mobility and stability and then you go for a run on top of that it's just like you're you're never going to get ahead of this and you're constantly going to be battling this so you know regressing a little bit it doesn't mean you can't go do cardio you should go you know, hiking up a hill would be really good, you know, elliptical. something like that. Yeah, or elliptical. There's other things that we can do uh, instead of that. But this is why running can just be so yeah. rough. And the main body. reason isn't necessarily because running's bad. It's because no. nobody treats running it's like... because she has bad movement and then she goes and yeah. does it a lot. And, no, and, basically and, and have nobody run. treats it like practice. Like, yeah. if, you know, she's probably focused on her technique and form when she squats. But then when you run, what do you do? You run to fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when things really start to, you know, hurt. Our next caller is Ashlyn from Minnesota. Ashlyn, how can we help you? Hi. So recently I had started weight training again after a really long hiatus. So I was approaching it as a beginner. I had been consistent for about two to three months until I got COVID. So since I've been out from training for about three to four weeks and I've been wanting to get back into it, but I've been dealing with this lingering fatigue and exhaustion from the COVID that I haven't experienced in a long time since having adrenal fatigue. So anyway, my question is, what do you guys think is the best way, best, healthiest, safest way to get back into weight training with this fatigue and exhaustion? Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. So there's a horse dewormer. You can, I'm just kidding. Don't <laughs> don't cancel us, <laughs> Spotify. No, Come okay, on, so man. no, no, I'm just kidding. No, okay, so here's the deal. Doug, where they're cringing. I right know now. he's already freaking out. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you the like the answer from my expertise, and then I'm going to give you the non-expertise answer just based off of stuff that I've read. Okay, so Great. here's this is like this is for sure the good advice. For sure, good advice is give it some time, go very slowly, and train according to how you feel. I've talked to lots of people uh, that feel like you do after recovering from illness, and it seems like some people it takes one to two months before they start to start to feel like themselves. And, you know, Adam was a, somebody, the same thing, he had about a month and a half or two months where he kind of felt crappy and then slowly it came back. So that's the, that's the okay. for sure, like piece of advice. Okay. Here's some speculation based off of what I've read. Take it with yeah. a grain of salt. I'm not a doctor, but I've read a lot about, um, glutathione and NAC supplementation to help with, uh, recovery from COVID. Um, there's, there's been some studies to show there's a strong connection and correlation to low glutathione levels and severe, um, uh, you know, symptoms of COVID and long COVID. So you can find liposomal glutathione. We work with a company called live on. They produce it. It's really good. It's one of the best ones I've, I've found. And then NAC you can find online. Amazon doesn't sell it anymore because I think the FDA is trying to re-regulate it. Um, and you know, although it's been available for 20 years, weird why all of a sudden they, they want to do that. But anyway, that's a side note. Those two things right there, try supplementing with them um, okay. and, and see if that if that helps with your recovery. But again, that's the part, take with a grain of salt. The, the most important part is just give yourself time. Everybody I've talked to that's been in this situation, it took them about a month to two months and then they started to feel like themselves again. As far as programming and stuff, uh, are, do you have Map Starter? I don't. I've been using like a mixture of don't hate me, <laughs> um, fitness influencer programs that I felt like took the best from each one and kind of made my own. 
Yeah, so I don't have a map one yet. We're, we're going to send you map starter. Yeah. Jesus. We, oh, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want you Bambi's doing that. Bambi's butt builder. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want you doing that. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? Map starter will be, will be absolutely perfect. For, trust the process too. I, yeah. I, anytime I put Katrina back on starter after she's uh, been off for a while, she's always antsy to get back after it. I'm like, listen, follow the programming. I promise that you'll continue to see great results. It'll pr get you ready for something a little more intense. So I would, I would follow starter. After you go through Starter, then I would consider going to Anabolic. So follow follow Starter to T. We're going to send that over to you for free. Um, that's what I would do. And then, so I, I just walked, you know. So I would go. I would go for walks, and because I, I even noticed, like, if I went for like a long walk or like a, like a pills and stuff like that, I could even feel. I felt like uh, almost like there was like uh, um, like someone standing on my chest. Mm. Like it was just hard. It was harder for me to breathe, and it took me a good solid almost two months. Uh, and all I would do is I would I would go or I'd be like riding the bike around the block with Max and, you know, something that I could do for a half hour to hour, no problem. I could only do for about 10 or 15 minutes. And so I would just do that. I would kind of I would kind of push to that limit and then I would back off and then mm -hmm. relax. And I noticed I'd be really tired uh, after that. So definitely my body's talking to me, letting me know that it was a lot for me at the time. So just take it slow and and, yeah. and do walks and starter for now. Just and listen to your body. Rest. I mean, yep. you really got to pay attention to those signals and like take – Take it easy and 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 really take that tempo and that pace down substantially, so you can you know use this time to to work on the quality of your form and the mechanics of uh, the movements, and uh, you know even just kind of sit in it uh, for a while uh, and and rebuild that tension and um, just just kind of pace it out at a very slow pace, and you're going to build that momentum and get back uh, when your body's adequately ready. Yeah, Ashley, one more piece of advice, okay. Yeah. Um, so are, are you a trainer or a co you, you, are you a trainer or coach? Do you coach anybody or train anyone? I'm a yoga teacher, but okay. not a fitness trainer. Okay. So, okay. Awesome. So this is going to be great. Okay. So I have a little bit of knowledge of yoga. I've taken yoga maybe, I don't know, he 30, the pants, maybe 30 it? times. Okay. <laughs> he wears now, the pants. Yeah. <laughs> I, wear yeah. I, I wear yoga pants uh, on the weekends. No, all, all joking aside, imagine this, right? You're a yoga instructor. You know what you're doing. Imagine if you had someone like me who came to you and said, hey, listen, I'm doing my own yoga routine. I took uh, like 15 classes uh, or I, I watched 15 videos on Instagram and I put together what I think to be the best routine for myself. Like, how would you how would you feel about that? Or what would you think about that? You're like, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yeah. So so what you're doing is, number one, you're pull, you're picking routines from a pool of idiots okay so yep, yep. fitness influencers are are literally fitness morons so, so they're I'm, I'm not i'm not exaggerating Get them, they're dumb Get them. and what you're doing is you're not only picking from a pool of idiots but then you're taking that and mixing it based off of yeah, your randomly putting your, lit, your limited experience so no no offense to you i get it but yeah. you don't know what you don't know. And so what you've probably right. done is you're probably taking terrible routines and just making another terrible one. So yep. follow Map Starter as okay. it's laid out. Trust the process just like you would want when your students to to trust your process and then see how see what happens. Okay. And should I take the program at the pace that it's Say yes. take it out, or should I just take it slow and listen yeah. to my body? Oh, well, it's, it's, always well, listen to your yeah, body. Always, but it's, but it's we factored that in. Yeah, that's factored into it. That's why okay. it's called Map Starter. Is the, the thought process is somebody who's been away from lifting for a while, or somebody who just came right. out of having a child. Like it's definitely a, a good place for you to start right now, and just just follow it as as instructed. Unless it's too, if it is too much, back off. But yeah. I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Awesome. That's All great. Right. Thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate this. No problem. Thanks, Thank Seth. you. All right. I tell you what, man, I really appreciate the social media fitness influencers because it's it, it's like it, they, us customers. Boy, do they give us like they, they give us a great uh, it just reminds me part of the market, don't they? Anytime totally. we get something like that, it always just reminds me of how much more work we have I to know. do. You know, if you have somebody who's been listening to us for uh, you know, I don't know, obviously long enough to know she knows how to, you know, send in a question yep. and get on here but then doesn't have any of the programs and is randomly pulling from influencers. It's like how many of, how many of our audience is still, or how many people in our audience are still doing things like that? So, right. yeah, the problem is that they, they, you know, they, they value exercises, just movement. Well, I'm just moving. Uh, so what's the difference? If well, I'm no, I'll never forget the first time um, I'm going to throw our friend under the bus here. 
uh, when Craig and I were hanging out, and he referred to exercise programming as ice cream flavors. Oh, that was a I good almost fucking you know threw my head through the wall after he said that. It's like, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? This is part of the problem. This is part of the problem is that people really think it's just ice cream flavors, and it's like, oh, you like Rocky Road, have Rocky Road. Yeah. Oh, you like mint chip, have mint chip. It's like there's <laughs> there's a lot of science that goes into good programming, right. just like programming for. It's more like programming for a fucking computer. Yeah, a program. Yeah, it's, yeah. You want the program to turn your computer. On you, you throw a, you throw a couple wrong ones and zeros and it doesn't do anything. Yes, or it crashes the whole. Yeah. It's a very effective way to get to your desired outcome, and it's just like there's a science behind it, and I guess that's why we get irritated because you know immediately whether or not they're using any science in their program. Yeah, well, and it's also there's also a major difference beside be, between programming for results and just general exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that I'll give you that that you know general exercise yeah, is like ice cream flavors. Yeah, sometimes it's like if you just want to randomly move and just burn calories, and yeah. that's your desired outcome. But most people calling in or most people listening to the show are, have specific goals. I want to lose X amount of body fat. I want to build so much muscle. I want to run faster, yeah. jump higher, live longer. Yeah, so I mean, you're consistent. That's great. Now yeah. let's look and see what's okay. the best way, right? You know, to be consistent. Right. It reminds me of like uh, when I you know with, I have friends who. You know, they, they're professional fighters or whatever. And they would always laugh at these like videos online of like, this is how you disarm someone who's pointing a gun at you. <laughs> like, oh my God, dude. You're going gonna to perfectly like happen exactly how the person's coming at you. Right? They're like, dude, yeah. they're going to get someone yeah. killed if somebody yeah. follows uh -huh. this, this yeah. stupid advice. So <laughs> it's hilarious. Look, uh, if you like our content, you got to go to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 